The Lord teach us to pray, and we begun this year of prayer, uh, this year of discernment, uh, with the first uh, in the series, and we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer. We're going to continue that today. We're going to talk today about Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And our scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 6, if you have your Bibles. You're welcome to follow along with me. If you don't, you're welcome to listen. As we read from Matthew chapter 6, we're going to read one verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Jesus said, but seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me and for me this morning? Gracious God, we are so grateful once again to be gathered together as a community of faith to lift our hearts up to you in worship. We're thankful, Lord, for the way that your Holy Spirit has worked through our gathering thus far, and we pray, Lord, that your Spirit would continue to move among us. Lord, I pray that in the next few minutes that I might decrease in this place in order that Jesus Christ might increase. And I pray, Lord, that my words would be your words. And God, as always, we humbly ask that you would open our ears, open our minds, but most of all, dear God, open our hearts. May the words that you have for us today be more for us and simply more information, but we pray that your words might dig deeply within our hearts, that we might find your words to be transforming in our lives. And all this we ask in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in the name of Jesus that we've offered this prayer today, saying, Amen. Amen. Well, I had a great idea this week, <clears throat> and I want to run it by you and think, see, see, how, see if you all think it's a great idea, too. I'm really thinking about, about giving up the minister gig, about kind of, you know, leaving that behind, and instead declaring myself king. I could be King Mike the first, and, and it would be great. I even have a, a, a picture of a costume that I might could wear. If we could have the first slide, I could go around kind of dressed like this. You know, uh, you know. Uh, people could could pay me taxes instead of the government. They could. I might be just as good a steward of the money. And not only that, I got something else. I I, I really, I think. This looks really good on me. I mean, what do you think? What do you think? King, King Mike the first? King Mike the first? I don't think that worked very well. Okay. So you're not buying it. Well, honestly, I don't go around dressed up like I'm on Game of Thrones. I don't wear a crown. I don't collect taxes. Uh, instead I pay them, but sometimes, sometimes I believe and I act as if though I'm a king, as if I am King Mike the first, as if my goal in this life is to gain as much as I can for myself, to have as large a castle as I might possibly have, to have the biggest and best and shiniest chariot, and to make people look at me and go, wow, look at Mike. Look at Mike. Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God. He talked a whole lot about God's kingdom. As a matter of fact, in the Gospel of Mark in the first chapter, he says this, if we can have the next slide, please. He says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And even from the beginning, Jesus was known as a king. Some three or four weeks ago, we, we were in this place and, and we sang, 
Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And we acknowledge that Jesus is our Lord, that, that Jesus is our king. But the trouble is, is that sometimes we may not again wear crowns. We, we might not dress like we were a king or a queen. But sometimes we act like our purpose is in this life to become kings and queens. To do everything we can for us. In the Lord's Prayer, it fascinates me and it has for years that we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To change that into more modern language away from, from the traditional prayer, Your kingdom come. That's what we pray. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, your will be done. And then we say, on earth right here, just like it is in heaven. And it serves as a reminder to us whose kingdom we belong to. Whose kingdom we belong to whose will, whose ways, whose path we are to be following, and who it is that really, really is in control. And it also reminds us of what we are to do here. That perhaps our goal is not just, not just to try to get into some heaven somewhere, but perhaps what God really wants from us, if we think about what Jesus told us to pray, is that we're to be bringing heaven here. That we've got a job here on earth. May it become here on earth just as it is in heaven. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to me uh, because I think about how little some days I think about the kingdom and about bringing God's kingdom and I'm thinking about other kingdoms and, and other things and doing other things and it amazes me sometimes how little we think about this and in the gospel of Matthew that I read you Jesus says seek first the kingdom of God now, many of you are familiar with this passage. It occurs right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is talking about worry, and particularly worrying about what you wear, what you eat, worrying about the, the temporal worldly things that consume us sometimes. And Jesus says, you don't have to worry about all that if you'll do this. And Jesus said, seek first God's kingdom Seek first God's righteousness and everything else will fall into place. Fascinating, isn't it? If you seek first God's kingdom, if you seek first God's righteousness, everything else will fall into place. And you won't have to worry. You won't have to worry. Yet we spend much of our time and much of many of our, our days are not spent in seeking God's kingdom, in seeking God's will, in trying to bring heaven to earth, and trying to make this place a better place, but we're engaged in building up our, our own kingdoms. Or perhaps we're engaged in helping somebody else build their kingdom. And it's fascinating to me because when Jesus says in Mark, repent, repent. The word repent literally means to go in a different direction. And it's almost as if Jesus is saying repent and believe in the kingdom of God. He's saying repent and quit following the king that you're following, whoever that king or queen might be. Quit following them and instead turn and follow me. Because if you seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness, everything else will fall into place. And it fascinates me that this is in the prayer. 
the prayer that we love, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, that we pray not for Mike's kingdom or anybody else's kingdom, but for God's kingdom to come, and not for Mike's will or anybody else's will to be done, but for God's will to be done. And it makes me wonder what our faith and what our world, what our lives would be like if we believed, if we believed and acted as if God's kingdom was most important. Because you you see, I think I understand, for, for me anyway, I understand why I spend time building up my own kingdom and going after my own desires and seeking my own will. I do this because I'm not sure that, that I believe what God says. I'm not sure that I really trust God. Now understand that if you ask me if I trusted God, I'd say yes, I, I, yes, I trust God. What I'm telling you is that sometimes my actions don't match my words. What I do doesn't match what I say. But you know, if the Creator said, hey, I want you to follow my son Jesus, and Jesus said, hey, really, seek first God's kingdom, everything else will fall into place, repent, turn, go in a different way, seek my kingdom out, why wouldn't we all go well, absolutely. Absolutely. Because every single time that I put myself in the place of king, and I don't really like that word king, what I'd really like to be is a benevolent despot. That was a word I learned in my history class years ago. A benevolent despot. You know, king is a little, it's a little too much, but just a benevolent despot. You know, you don't have to bow all the way to the ground, just a little bit. Just a little bit, right? That's it. But when we pray, we're saying, not my will but yours. Not what I want, but what you want. And don't build any other kingdom, God, on this earth but yours. And I think maybe, brothers and sisters, that, that, that our issue is a trust issue because we're just not really sure. We just don't really know. And that makes me think of this quote from, from Bob Goff that goes like this. We can have the next slide. When you trust someone, you don't need to know everything. Right? When you trust somebody, you don't need to know everything. And when we pray the Lord's Prayer and we say, Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Right here just as it is in heaven. What we're saying is, God, we're going to work for your kingdom no matter what. No matter what. Because we trust that your kingdom is going to be better than anything else we've ever seen. Than anything we could imagine, than anything we could ask for. We're going to trust you, God, that your kingdom is the right kingdom and that you Lord are the king we need to follow and we're going to work hard to follow your will to follow your teachings to be disciples of Jesus and to make sure that we're working to make this place we live this earth, this planet to make this place look like a place that honors you, that gives you glory, that looks like the place we think you'd like for it to be. And again, this is, this is antithetical to what we're taught, to what the world teaches us. The world teaches us to be for ourselves, to take care of ourselves, not to rely on anyone else. Make sure you do for yourself because probably nobody else is going to do it for you. And yet, yet, 
we pray, may your kingdom come and may your will be done. May it be done. The most striking example I can think of 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 this happening in Scripture of someone saying, your will be done, was when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus knew that he was soon to be arrested, that probably he was going to be beaten, tortured, and ultimately executed. And like any rational, thinking human being, he didn't really want that to happen. And so what comes out of that, what, what we remember from that scene is this verse, if we can have the next slide. Jesus praying, not my will, but your will be done. Now, brothers and sisters, this one thing, if Jesus said, this is how you ought to pray, this is how you ought to pray, And he never, ever gave a concrete example of himself praying that, praying your will be done, and yielding to that. But at this moment of of crisis for him, at this moment of facing torture, death, abandonment, all of those things that Jesus faced, he said, not my will but your will be done. So I think we just need to pay attention when we pray the Lord's Prayer and we know what we're saying. What we're saying is not my kingdom, not any other kingdom, but Lord, we want your kingdom to come. Not my will, not what I want the most, Lord. Not what anybody else wants the most. Not majority rule. But Lord, what you will, what you want is what we want. And then we pray that we will work for that very thing. For God's kingdom, for God's will to happen, to become a reality in this place. Just like it's a reality in heaven. Brothers and sisters, are we willing to believe what we pray and to yield to the true King the true kingdom, are we willing to give up our will and seek God's will so that, so that on earth it might be as it is in heaven? It's a question worth thinking about. Amen?